Hello and a very warm welcome back to Fox's Weight Watcher Kitchen. I'm Johnny Fox. Now, today's recipe, I want to follow on from the last one we did. Remember the samosas I showed you, three different types. A lot of my people that I've been talking to recently said, why didn't you do the gluten-free one as well? So today I'm going to show you how to do that. Ingredients-wise, let's quickly run you through the batch of what we're going to use. We're going to use a whole carrot, purely because I like a bit more vegetable. I mean, standard Indian samosas are just potato and peas. I like to colour mine up, as you know great lover of all types of food so we're going to put a bit of carrot in there as well potatoes once they're peeled and chopped if you're with Weight Watchers and you're still point counting I'm going to be using 300 grams of peeled and chopped potatoes going to be using a couple of my favorite bullet chilies onions a couple of onions they're almost tennis ball size if you want the exact ratio but as you can see red or white doesn't really matter for this one I'm going to blend the two together uh, garlic and ginger I'm using 30 grams of garlic 30 grams of ginger we will be putting some coriander in at the end and the usual tin of peas spices so we can get the flavor in there as well a good heap teaspoonful of garam masala powder i'm using cashmere chili powder but only half of a teaspoonful cumin powder one third of a teaspoonful and the turmeric powder i'm using about a level teaspoonful of turmeric powder for the wraps towards the end instead of getting flowers which i know for gluten-free people you can get a lot of different gluten-free recipes i'm going to take a spin-off remember way back in time we did a lentil flatbread mix we've got in here we've got one cup of red lentils and two cups of water all I've done for now I've washed it and cleaned it and soaked it overnight that is going to be our wrap I will be using I know some people say you shouldn't use it but for seasoning I will be adding a little bit of the table salt in there as well so let's get this peeled and chopped and get it onto the stove and we'll be right back okay so we're all peeled and chopped I've got the potatoes and the carrots you can see they're just starting to come up to the boil now time to get ready for the other things in the pan I'm using if you're with Weight Watchers you want to know the point I'm using 24 grams of extra virgin rapeseed oil which will equate to five points and the potatoes that are in there as well if we're using 300 grams we know that's six points so we've got 11 points of ingredients in total let's get the onions into the pan and start the frying of these And then while they're starting up, make sure we get all the last few bits in there as well. Whilst they're frying up, I'm gonna quickly show you a little thing that I do to help make, you know when you're doing your garlic and ginger paste, if you have a garlic and ginger paste pot, you can buy them from the supermarkets. But because I'm using the chilies, I cheat. I get my blender. You've probably seen me on previous videos using this for quite a few things. All I do is take the core end off this is the piece that we don't need so that will go into the pot and I do slice this down lightly because they're quite a mild chili if again it's all about personal preference if you like things hotter and spicier put some more cashmere chili pepper into the mix of powders you can use the green finger chilies if you like or get the hot and spicy ones or even some chili flakes again it's personal preference for me I like the flavor of chili but I don't like it too hot then the ginger we're just going to quickly help the blender by slicing it down slightly and just keep throwing it all in there. So ingredients in there, the two chili peppers, we've got 30 grams of garlic, 30 grams of ginger. We get the lid onto the top of this because this will prepare and then out with the top and then we can just blend this up so it's nice and easy. As you can see, it doesn't take that long to blend this one up. And that is now prepared, ready, for when we want to put it into the pot. As you can see inside of there, all nicely blended up. And all I'm going to use in a minute, once the onions are, are starting to get a little bit translucent, that will go straight on top. So we're just going to play with the onions for about another four or five minutes to get these down. And the other ingredient, as you know, I always put in mind to help the onions reduce down and a bit of flavouring as well. I tend to put a little bit of salt in there. That will equate to roughly a teaspoonful of salt if you wanted to add in. So let's cut and edit there for a second. We'll reduce these down a little bit and then we get the garlic and chilies in there as well. So back in a sec. Okay, so now the onions have been on there for a good couple of minutes. They're reducing down nicely. Time to start throwing in that garlic and ginger paste that we just made. And I know what a lot of people say as well. When you're using these blenders, you do get a little bit of waste on these. There's a little trick that I want to show you guys as well. 
because we know we're going to need some water in a minute to do the powder get some fresh water from your pot you don't need too much of it and give this a swill you can even scrape it from all down the sides because we'll use a bit of this water in a minute but then this way i'm not wasting any of these ingredients you can see just, all i'm doing is just bringing all the goods in from the bottom into the bottom of the pan and because we don't want it on our fingers always keep a cloth to one side and then all we're going to do is just incorporate this is where i know i've said this before i really wish this was smell vision because when you get this garlic and ginger paste especially with the chilies now as well you get all the fragrances starting to come out of the food and this is the bit that i love when i'm cooking let's get that around that side i can play a bit easier this way just give it a wiggle around and then all we're going to do is cook this down for about another three to four minutes just to get this to reduce right down and then what we'll start doing is to get the powders ready ready to put the ingredients of the powders inside so we'll cut and edit again there and be back in a second okay so they've had another two to three minutes of reducing it you see the, the color of them they're just starting to catch on the edge now we don't want them to go too brown at this point so now we're going to add in all of those lovely spices all in one go and give that a good stirring and this is where God, just with this little bit now you start getting the flavors of all the spices coming together and because we know this is going to dry when you're frying spices any kind of indian spices in oil like this you can see it starts to catch the pan slightly just make sure you give it a good move around for about 30 seconds to a minute that is all the powders need and then in a short while you'll see it starts coming together like a bit of a dried mess on the in the bottom of the pan now that's had about 30 seconds remember the last of this water because we don't want to waste the garlic and ginger paste going to add this touch by touch just a little bit at a time so we can carry this is where you start getting those lovely spice flavors coming out last little swill of the garlic and ginger paste with the chili and that should be just enough water to stop the spices from burning and we just keep this on the pan and leave this cooking now to reduce it down enough to make it almost into a paste we can add more water if we need to but so that we know that all of these ingredients are cooked nicely what i always do with mine and everyone's got their own personal preference on this guys if you want to do it just for a few minutes and get like a, a rawish element to the flavor remember bear in mind the water section of the garlic and ginger paste with the chili has not yet been cooked so what i like to do with mine is keep it on the pan here usually for about five minutes and it times it perfectly with the carrots and potatoes that are boiling up beside as well so we're going to cut this and edit this we're going to leave this simmering down for about about five minutes just to make sure that the last of the water mix with the garlic and ginger paste is all infused into there and it's all thoroughly cooked then we start adding the rest of the ingredients and we show you how to wrap them in a while back in a sec okay so now we've got things almost prepared this has been on the stove for another five to six minutes just reducing down i've added a little bit of water a couple of times you can see just enough liquid in there to keep it moist but not too much that it's actually swimming in the meantime the potatoes and carrots are cooked so now they're strained just going to put those into the mix to start with and this will start infusing all of those lovely flavors into the ingredients we're putting in also at this point the whole tin of peas and put those in as well and just gradually mix all this lot together you can see this is almost our samosa mix already together i'm going to give that a bit of a shake around like i do because i want it to go over and mix as well and because everything is already cooked all we're trying to do at this point is just get the flavors from all of those spices the onion the garlic and chili paste all in there together to get the flavors to penetrate into the potato and into the peas and while we're there because you can see gas wise i'm keeping it on a medium ring but still on full blast and then the last bit as well coriander guys if you're not a lover of coriander i've basically while, while we've been on pause i've chopped this up as well i'm using a whole bunch of coriander because for me in samosas i do like the taste of coriander again personal preference if you don't like it you don't have to put it in and because it's already cooked all i'm going to do is put all that coriander in there together 
give it a little blend together because the coriander I don't want this overly cooked because bearing in mind once we're cooked on the stuffing we're going to leave this to cool down in a short while and while it's cooling we'll be start working on the wraps so now that is all almost blended together just give it the usual trick and spin it over a few times because all we're going to do is cook this down for probably about a minute to a minute and a half just to get the coriander taste into there as well but as you can see that is the samosa mix virtually done going to leave it on the stove for probably about another minute just to get it to infuse and i'm going to put it somewhere to one side and let it cool down before we start onto the wraps so saucepan there that is just about there let's check on the underside that will just about do so all the gases can go off and what we're going to do is leave that to cool down for a while but in the meantime i want to just run you through the bits and pieces that i'm going to be using for the wrap so let's have a bit of a bit of a clean up on here first now remember earlier on we had the one cup of lentils and two cups of water before we blend this up i want to add a little bit more flavor to this because like you know with the lentil flatbread i followed on with five lentil recipes this recipe is so adaptable you can use it for lots of different things like with this one as well we're going to use this for samosa skins so first thing i'm going to throw in a little bit of seasoning with a bit of salt and because I've got my Indian spice kit here, because I'm cooking with Indian food, where's the garam masala? I'm going to add in sort of, I don't know if you can see that, almost a good teaspoonful of garam masala powder. And the reason I do that is, again, it's all about personal preference. If you just want to blend this up, you can just blend it up as a lentil mix with no flavourings whatsoever. For me, I like a little bit of taste. I like a little bit of flavour. Same as the samosa mix. And all we do is blend this up, usually for about 30 seconds to a minute. So let's pause this for a second. And that is all the blending done. Fingers crossed it's right first time. Look at that, all those lovely spices and everything else blended. And you can, if you want to go further, because we can still see there are a few lentils up the side. I always get my wooden spoon, or in this case, my rubber spoon. Give it a wipe round on the sides, just to make sure that everything is off the sides, because what we don't want to do is be getting bits into this. Keep that to one side on there, as it falls off. And then we'll just give this another quick blend just to make sure that all of the ingredients are fully incorporated with the mix. So, and that is everything all blended up and ready to go. You can see in there we've got a lovely pancake consistency blend of lentils and spices and just just the smell of that you can smell the garam masala in there as well as well as that lovely earthy taste from the lentils so we're going to leave the samosa mix to cool down for about 15 minutes i'm going to have a little bit of a tidy up and then we'll come back and show you how to put the a whole lot together with the red lentil wraps back in a sec okay so we've had a bit of a clean up we're getting ready to do the wraps now as you can see we've got the blended lentils already i've got a pan i've added on quite hot here already there's no oil in this as you can see absolutely clean pan just because i use this a lot for non-oil cooking i always find because it's a good non-stick pan we can use this one and you know when we made the lentil flatbreads normally you get a ladle full of the juice and pour that in there comes out a little bit too thick if you've got a crepe pan again almost a wrap consistency again too thick for doing samosas so what i'm going to do this time is use just a little pasting brush i'm using the latex type one i don't know if you can see that from the overhead camera a latex kind of brush because i have used a paintbrush but i find with the paintbrush it drags the food around too much and all we're going to do is just paint the bottom of the pan no oil in this at all and all it does it starts to cook from the bottom straight away and then you can just gradually build this up as it goes on more and more keeping that flame on a reasonably good high heat you don't want to burn too much and then you can see as it starts catching the pan it starts filling in all the gaps with the lentil mix and eventually you end up with a nice perfectly circular wrap which is absolutely perfect to make these samosas. You can, I'll show you in a second once we've done this one, how to make another wrap a different way. You can see that is almost there now. 
just going to spread this one out a little bit longer and you can see it's just starting to dry enough now all we do a bit like remember when we did the lentil flatbread patience at this point is a virtue if you don't if you're not patient enough we're waiting for the whole top of this to dry out because if we test it straight away you can see a little bit too soft on the side because i've been making these for quite some time i know i want the edges to be I suppose the only way to describe it semi crispy because what it does it sets the bottom of the wrap before you even try to take it out that is getting there and then we just test all the edges to make sure it's going to lift okay. Put the spoon all the way around. Looks, look like, looks like that is going to lift out a treat. So we get from the back, lift up slightly more, and then with the fingers, just grab and pull. And there is the first wrap. I'm gonna show you this one again, because let's suppose you make a mistake at this point and you think, well, I didn't get the wrap right. As I pulled it out, it folded over. I'm trying to undo it and it's all gone absolutely wrong. Let's show you what you can do because if this was flour, at this point, that would be going in the garbage or in, in the bin. Because we're doing a lentil flatbread mix, guess what guys? I'm gonna put that straight back into the mix. Give this brush a bit of a move out of the way. Put the blade back in, but because it's already been cooked, it's gonna be slightly drier let's add just a touch more water because we've lost that little bit of more moisture let's get the lid back onto the blender and then this is what i call no waste cooking get that on properly re-blend all we're going to do is remix the same consistency take the blender away and then when we look on the inside guess what guys we're back to where we was before. It looks slightly thicker, so you can add a little bit more water if need be. And then all we do is start again, because this time round, I said I'd show you a different way. You can pour some in and paint it quicker. It's a bit like, you know when you're painting emulsion on a wall, you wouldn't use a small paintbrush, you'd use a roller. This is what I call the roller technique. Pour it in quickly, but again, you have to spread it quite quick to make sure it goes thin enough because what you don't want is to end up with some thick pieces and thin bits. Now we've got just a few bits on the edges that just need a bit more shape. And you can see it's starting to pull it away so you just add a bit more wet into the sides. And that looks pretty much there. Just gonna leave that again, wait till the top goes dry. Once you can see it's gone nice and dry on the top, you see, see these wet bits? And again, some people would say, yeah, but it's still quite, quite a thick wrap, isn't it? You can make these even thinner. But the problem is once you start putting the stuffing in, they, they might be thinner, but they're gonna be even harder to work with. So again, just test the edges. That feels like it's dry on the edges there, pulling away that side. And all I'm doing is basically testing the mix. It's still a little bit doughy in the middle, so it might not come away just yet. Again, it's all about the patience. All I'm doing is testing the edges at this point. You can see a little bit there. I'm gonna move that off of there. But what I don't wanna do is to try to lift it out far too early. That is now moving nicely. And then once we've got that up into the air, so you're not burning your fingers, and just lift out this as simple as that i'm going to move that to one side now because this is still semi moist on the top we can use this one straight away with a pizza cutter rather than a knife just roll it right the way through the middle and then we can move one half of that to one side and because it's still warm and moist i find this easier we're going to take from the straight edge left side and fold almost in but keeping it away from the moist area inside and then with the other side wrap it over but unlike with the flour one you can use a really small amount and seal it with the glue of flour this one because it's a lentil flatbread wrap we've got to go a little bit thicker and because it's still warm we can still pinch all the way down that seam and right the way down to the point and then we still end up with that lovely samosa wrap cone so we get a bit of samosa stuffing, put some of those in there, usually a good couple of spoonfuls. 
press in with the fingers, but again, because it's not flour, guys, this is a lot softer, so practice and practice and practice. Once it's all in there, because it is still soft, we can just press these edges. But you can see how this is splitting open here because it's still a little bit too moist. So we can seal that together, but I'll show you a little trick with this in a while. Because this is a little bit too too dry around there, it's not sticking enough. So all we do is come back to the mix and then just paste a little bit of that juice on the side. Spreading it with the fingers and then roll over and give it a very light pressing on the edges. Once we lift up and turn over, we can see we've now got a lovely little samosa wrap. But guys, here's the good thing. See, we've got a split. It doesn't matter about the split. We can pinch together slightly to get it to seal. But because we know it's lentil mixture, a bit like we did in the pan just a little while ago, we can just almost like polyfill it and then just finish up with the fingers just to seal up any little holes that we've got. And then all we do then, what I tend to do with mine is get a baking tray. I'm using a pizza tray for this one and then just rest onto the tray. And then once that one's done, we'll put these in the oven afterwards. Because bear in mind guys, the skin is cooked, the stuffing is cooked. All we need to do is to basically crispy these up. So again, left hand side over, fold over with the right hand side. And because it's not too hot, this one is not going to stick as easy, but we're still gonna give it a press to see how it's going to stick. And that's actually still got it. And unlike flour, it's a lot softer. So you have to be a lot more careful with these. Add about a spoon and a bit of stuffing again inside. Give it a bit of a press and then squash down again because it's starting to dry now. That's why I like to take these out of the pan and do these as I go. You can see not sticking on this one. So all we do, we come back to the lentil paste, add some on the edges, a bit like when we did the roll over a minute ago, rest it onto the side and give it a little press. And because it's already pressed one side, we can put our finger in there and add a bit more moisture. And then we can do our little roll over like we did before, just to make it slightly smaller. And there, once that's been pressed the other side, and there is another perfect little samosa wrap lentil skin. I'm gonna carry on and get the rest of these done. Hopefully, we're going to get the whole lot done. I'm going to put them in the oven. Like I say, cooking time in the oven. I always tend to find, if you're just doing what I call the cementing, you know, adding that little bit more liquid to make them, all we're trying to do is to get that to go a little bit crispy on the outside. It does help them crisp up, but I'm going to wrap the rest of these up, get them into the oven for about 10 or 15 minutes, come back and I'm going to show you a nice plateful of how these lentils look. So back in a while. Okay, so we're into the home straight. The final tray has now gone into the oven. I've just taken them all off of this one, put them onto a plate for you. I'll be honest, had a bit of an accident with one of them. It sort of slipped and fell into my mouth. I do apologize for that. Quantity wise, guys, I've just made 24 of these lovely samosas. The good thing about these are, the thing I love about these, number one, if you're gluten intolerant, these are gluten free. If you're a vegetarian, they're very good for vegetarians as well, because there's no meat in there. If you're trying to lose weight and you're with Weight Watchers, which is where I was, point was, we calculated it up. 300 grams of the potato is only six points because it's boiled potatoes. We use five points worth of oil, makes each of these samosas roughly half of a point. Taste wise, I'll be honest, I've already bitten into this. They taste absolutely delicious. Uh, I was going to buy it again, but I don't really want to keep every video. I keep biting and I spend like 10 minutes chewing and I just want to show you guys what it's like. I couldn't wait. It slipped and I couldn't, you know, really do apologize for doing that. But as you can see, really nice. The one thing I will say to you guys though as well, it's not like you're making a flour wrap when you're doing these. They don't fold and they're not as easy. They're a lot softer. The only thing I would recommend to you guys is when you're doing it for the first time or the second time or possibly even the third time, have a little bit of patience in what you're doing with the wrap. Make sure that the pan is really hot. Make sure that you're brushing it on enough and it's thick enough. Let it dry enough so you can peel it off into a sheet. If it doesn't come off into a sheet really well, 
put it back into the mix like I showed you earlier on, and then you can go again. Hopefully, guys, you've enjoyed the video. I have thoroughly enjoyed myself making this one. Very naughty, I know, the fact that I ate a bit more samosa on, on the way back from the, <laughs> from the oven. Must apologize for that as well, but hopefully you've liked it. If you do like it, there's a subscribe button down there. If you wanna get uh, notified of other videos when they come up as well, click on that bell button until we do it again. Hopefully, you're gonna have a great week, guys. Catch you on the next video. I'm gonna go away and eat some more of these. Have a great week, bye.